And Mark Haskell is here. His book is Heart of Dankness. I love saying this title a hundred times over. It's so fun. <laughs> Underground Botanists, Outlaw Farmers, and the Race for the Cannabis Cup. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. So um, the novel, you, you've done four novels prior to this. The, the one just prior also dealt with the same topic, cannabis. Um, what's the fascination there? Well, I, I was fascinated by the Cannabis Cup, which is this uh, annual event that happens in Amsterdam. It's next year's the 25th uh, annual cup, and it's sort of like a cross between the Olympic Games and uh, uh, county fair. It's a, a blind tasting of all the best cannabis in the world, and growers from all, a bunch of different countries all over the world come. There's, you know, some famous Canadian growers uh, who have won the cup in past years, and. And I, I just thought, this has got to be the goofiest thing I've ever heard of. So, and, <laughs> and if you're and Canadian and you win the cup, how do you take that home? Well, I'm sure you just pack it in your suitcase. It's just a little cup, you yeah. know. But how do you get your cannabis to Amsterdam is another question. And well, what are they measuring there? Potency? No, the, it, it's a whole, um, the, you know, it's organoleptic. It's you smell it, you wait, taste wait it. What does that mean? Holy. Wait, you, you, that? You, you use For the uninitiated. Your, you use your sense organs to, you know, you taste it, you smell oh, it. You, yeah, that's actually how the FDA in the States judges, you know, the freshness of poultry and stuff. They, they smell it, basically. They don't, there's no other way to tell. This is a strange world a bit, isn't it? In, in a <laughs> strange industry because it seems to remain on the fringe. It's illegal. Yet... There are certain times when people and, and even law enforcement will turn a blind eye yeah. to it. Um, now there's medical uses for it. It's a total gray area, you know. What I found fascinating and why I wrote the book was that the, I met these people, these botanists that work in Amsterdam and, uh, and also in California, and they're the most sort of fanatic connoisseurs that you could ever meet. They're really interesting people. Like one guy is a former Italian paratrooper. and. He travels around the world. He, he's in Swaziland right now, but he goes to Malawi and India, finding uh, unadulterated land race strains of cannabis that you know he can take the seeds back to Amsterdam and start working with and develop Does, new flavors, new tastes, new effects. How many strains are there? Is it like, oh, like hundreds. It's like wine. It's exactly like wine, and it's judged just like wine too. They taste it, you know, sniff it. S swirl it in the and do they bong. truly take the yeah, right? <laughs> they truly take themselves seriously as connoisseurs of this. They are serious connoisseurs. They're, yeah, absolutely. It's fascinating. In California, it, it, it also makes up like a huge, the, the amount of money spent and that's moving through the California economy is pretty staggering. It's the, the University of California uh, Agriculture Studies Department did a survey and they found it's the largest cash crop in California by far. Is cannabis. Cannabis, yeah. And it's actually the largest cash crop in the United States, more than corn or wheat. And, and I think the same really? can be said to you for British Columbia as, oh, as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> and then there's the criminal element to it. I mean, it's just, the, it's, just it's political, it's criminal, mm -hmm. it's, it's got, it, there's no aspect it doesn't actually touch when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, you know, for me, for, as a writer, it's perfect because it's hedonism meets criminality and they kind of intersect in this great, funny way. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what fascinated me. What, what, how, what? What are, do you think our, our social standards are, are changing towards cannabis or are we still feeling like? I think so because if you, at least in the states, there's three states that are now going to have legalization on the ballot. There's like 16 or 17 states that have some sort of medical um, right. laws. And I think that that's changing and, and I think obviously there's some debate here in Canada about it too. So, so. I think what's happened on an economic level, people are, governments are figuring like, you know, we can make some money taxing this, we can regulate it, and then keep it, if you regulate it like wine, you keep it out of the hands of kids, you can tax it, you can make you money start from it. You cut out a criminal element. You cut out the criminal that. element because right now, as the laws stand, you know, people are arrested for gardening, basically, and the only, the only winners in that are the private prison systems and organized crime. Right. So you look at that. Tell us oh. about uh, your research for this book. Well, I, I, it was grueling, grueling yeah, research. Sure. Um, what well, I can are remember. You, are you sampling? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because yes. I wasn't a connoisseur at all of mm. cannabis. So uh, when I started meeting these people, I, part of the fun of, of the book is me learning how to taste it and how to, mm -hmm. you know, figure it out and stuff. But I mean, there are people who they pick up a bud and they go, 
oh, this is grown in organic soil, but, you know, and it's this and it's that. Yeah. You know, I can't do that. That's well, that must be shocking, though, because you always think of sort of cannabis as being part of this fringe culture, but it, you definitely see this shift now. Uh, were you surprised by the sort of variety of people that you met? Oh, yeah. Uh, what I found is that everybody smokes cannabis occasionally. I mean, it, say you smoke it once a year, you're at someone's party, there's a joint passes around, you have a puff, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty much, it's surprising how many people do it, yeah. Um, and I think the United Nations did some sort of worldwide survey and they said 167 million people around the world smoke. But in Canada, I think it's 3 million that smoke regularly. What um, did you find as far as the, the le legalization debate? Um, did you find much in, in Amsterdam? It, it, does it work there? Does it work in Holland as far as doing the things that we were just talking about, reducing the criminal element and, and providing tax money for the government? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, the money, it's the second largest industry in Holland. That's a 2 billion euro a year turnover with like 400 euro, million euros in taxes. But what they do that's really smart that I wish that we would do in North America is that they have a soft drug policy. So they realize that if you're a kid and, and you want to go buy cannabis, you go to a drug dealer and they're also going to have ecstasy or cocaine or LSD or any all, all kinds of hard drugs. Right. If you have a coffee shop and all they can sell are cannabis products, then you've eliminated that exposure to those harder drugs. And, and they found that it really works in Holland to keep people away from you know, heroin and narcotics like that. There we go. Well, the Very book is smart. called Heart of Dankness, Underground Botanist, Outlaw Farmers, and the Race for the Cannabis Cup. Mark Haskell-Smith, thanks so much for dropping by. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great talking to you.